1969, when man first broke the bonds that tied him to Earth, marks the end of a decade of fantastic space adventures. But for American industry and business, the moon landings mean just the start of a new era. Thousands of benefits for mankind have resulted directly from the space program. Many more will come. How will our nation use its new space age technology? And what kind of a year will 1970 be for American business and industry? Here are some answers. The outlook for 1970. Technology developed for our space program has provided new tools for industry. New welding techniques have been refined, new alloys have been developed, and we have new knowledge of lightweight, high-strength steels. Another space age development, the high-speed computer, is being used in hundreds of ways to help solve problems here on Earth. For instance, the paper pileup in brokerage houses is being studied by information systems experts who are applying advanced techniques of the aerospace industry to help streamline operations. Another example, control of electric power. Aerospace systems analysts are developing equipment and methods to handle increased demand. This mock-up of a system being developed for use in Philadelphia will sense potential problems and provide information quickly enough to prevent power interruptions or blackouts. What's ahead for 1970? One space-oriented industry leader, Willard Rockwell, Jr., board chairman of North American Rockwell, reports. America's industrial output is directly affected by the efficiency of our assembly lines. As better ways are found to handle materials, productivity goes up and jobs become more meaningful. Automation developed for industry is being applied in other areas, such as airport baggage handling. Unless new systems are put into use right now, the super jets of the 70s will create luggage jams which may cancel out the time advantage of air travel. One answer, high-speed, computer-controlled electric carts which hold the baggage in removable trays. The carts can start their journey at the airport parking lot, go directly to the aircraft, and not be touched again until the owner takes them from the same tray at his destination. The system can unload baggage from a giant jet, about 1,000 pieces, and have it in the claim area in less than 10 minutes. Other concepts in materials handling are discussed by Jervis Webb, president of the Jervis B. Webb Company. Employers in the year ahead will be using conveyors, computers, and automation to free workers from menial tasks and to boost national productivity to satisfy the demands of every citizen for a better life. One imaginative advance can be seen this year in new hospitals. Battery-powered driverless vehicles called AMSCARs are used to transport sterile equipment, linens, food, and drugs. A simple panel switch programs destinations and a sonic detector prevents collision with other traffic. The vehicles move freely from floor to floor by calling their own elevators. They automatically sterilize themselves between trips. Using better ways to meet consumers' increasing demands, we look forward to a productive 1970. <laughs> About 15 million people, one of every six employed, work in the manufacture, distribution, maintenance, or commercial use of motor vehicles. Highway travel in the United States exceeds one trillion vehicle miles a year, or the equivalent of more than two million round trips to the moon. This heavy auto travel presents some problems. Cities continue to seek solutions to congested freeways and polluted air. Auto industry researchers are working to make emissions control systems even more efficient. Devices being installed on all new cars cut pollutants by about 80 percent from 1960 levels. The hardcore unemployed are getting an assist from the auto industry with good results. Better community relations as well as a valuable labor force are gained through these training programs. Looking at prospects for the auto industry for 1970, Lynn Townsend, board chairman of Chrysler Corporation. Four of every five U.S. families own a car. More than a quarter of them own two or more cars. Because of the continuing growth of the under 35 age group, 
we're placing more emphasis on the youth market. Today's young people are interested in specialty cars. They want more options on power, transmissions, and other equipment. We're continually running tests to find new ways of engineering safety into the basic structure of the car. We're also seeking ways to refine and improve the existing safety items that have become standard equipment over the past 10 years. A growing population makes us highly optimistic about 1970. If some of the restrictive measures are removed from the economy, our industry could sell close to 10 million cars, a healthy outlook for the year ahead. Everyone's certain now that it isn't a paper moon. But more and more, it is a paper world we live in. Paper production reached an all-time high in 1969 as mills turned out nearly 550 pounds of paper for every person in the United States. Office copiers and computers devour a seemingly endless supply. Another use of paper gaining in popularity with the wet set is the disposable diaper. Sales neared $100 million in 1969. The latest version is this pinless disposable model. Nine million babies, each changed some 3,000 times a year, add up to a potential demand for more than 25 billion diapers for the paper industry in 1970. Other disposable products are also gaining wider acceptance. Paper sheets and garments, which can be discarded after one use, are used in many hospitals. Reporting on the paper industry, Harrison F. Dunning, board chairman and chief executive officer of Scott Paper Company. Paper continues to play an ever more important role in our daily lives. Products such as paper towels and tissues, which didn't even exist a few decades ago, have become household necessities in this space age generation. But despite the growth of these convenience applications, the oldest uses are still among the most important. Paper is a vital link in our communications and is a keystone in man's storehouse of knowledge. To meet growing demands for paper, the industry is employing new methods of harvesting and reseeding our timberlands to ensure a continuous supply of pulpwood. Many of these lands are being developed for recreational and commercial uses. The paper industry is also pioneering in developing new techniques to ensure cleaner air and water in the future. The success of the paper industry in 1970 will be measured by our ability to serve the growing paper needs of a modern America. One major customer for the paper industry is the communications industry. America's magazine, newspaper, and book publishers consumed 13 million tons of paper during 1969. Space Age technology is helping publishers as they use computers to set type, deliver subscriptions, and make up magazines. As Americans become better educated, demand for the printed word grows. There are more than 11,000 daily and weekly newspapers published in the United States and over 9,000 regularly published magazines. 1969 was a year of growth for radio and television too. 96% of all American homes have one or more television sets. 36% have color. There are more radios in America than people, over 303 million. Looking ahead at some new trends is Marvin Watmore, President and Chief Executive Officer of Coles Communications. During the affluent 70s, there will be more time for creative leisure and personal fulfillment. Americans will rely even more on publishers and broadcasters for information, education, and entertainment. Radio and television stations will increase news and local programming to tell what's happening instantly. Newspapers will tell why it's happening by expanding in-depth news coverage. Large circulation magazines will enrich our lives by exploring the diversity of our world and its people. A growing number of smaller magazines will help us get more from special interests like travel, rose gardening, snowmobiling. Publishers and broadcasters welcome the challenge of the 70s.
America's economy grew rapidly in 1969. Our gross national product rose about 8%. But the biggest part of that rise was not a real increase in production. It was a reflection of higher costs for almost everything. What will 1970 mean for the consumer and the businessman? One answer comes from Tom Clausen, president-elect of the Bank of America. Growth in 1970 and progress in the fight against inflation depend in large part on the degree of American involvement in Vietnam. If the president's Vietnamization policy succeeds, the return home of large numbers of American troops could provide a healthy stimulus to the economy. Most economists, however, predict a leveling off period before beginning another decade of high level growth, both on Earth and in space. This is the outlook for 1970.